الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اللهم اني اعوذ بك ان اشرك بك وانا اعلم استغفرك من ذنوبي وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد we reach the portion of our treaties Aqidat al-Wasatiya by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala where Shaykh al-Islam said rahimahullah ta'ala regarding the Aqidah of Ahl al-Sunnati wal Jamaa, he described some of what would happen on the day of judgment, the day of resurrection and as Muslims we should always try to be conscious that Yom Al-Qiyamah, as it is one of the pillars of Iman, as the Prophet Sallallahu said in the authentic hadith, the hadith of Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam, when he was asked about uh, Iman. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Iman, and tu'mina billahi wa malaykati wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa tu'minu bi rasulihi wa liyom al-akhir wa tu'minu bi qadri khayrihi wa sharr. In the hadith of Jibreel, والسلام, the Prophet وسلم, when he said, when he was asked about Iman, he said, Iman, as we've been studying all along in this treatise, and the beginning of this treatise referred to Iman Billah, especially Al Asma'i was in fact the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the six pillars of Iman, which are mentioned in that hadith, in Tu'mina Billahi, to believe in Allah and His angels and His books, meaning the Quran, the, the Bible, and the Torah, the original books, and the, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Psalms of David, alayhi salatu wasalam, and the other books that we are unaware of, and to believe in the messengers, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, all of them, those we know of and those we, who are not mentioned to us. And to believe in the uh, Yom al Ba'th, the day of judgment. And this is where we've reached in this treatise, a description of some of the things that will happen on the day of judgment. And of course, the last pillar of Iman being the Qadr, the divine destiny, the good of it and the evil of it. So Shaykh Islam mentioned in his treatise, he said, وَتُكُمْ الْقِيَامَةِ أَلَتِي أَخْبَرَ اللَّهُ بِهَا فِي كِتَابِهِ وَعَلَى لِسَانَ رُسُولِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَأَجْمَعُ عَلَيْهَا الْمُسْلِمُونَ He said that the day of judgment will be established and Allah has given, told us about it in His book and on the tongue of His Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Muslims have consensus on this. So anyone who denies the Day of Judgment is not a Muslim, is not a believer in Islam. The Muslims have consensus on it, on it that people will rise from their graves barefooted, naked, and uncircumcised. And Allah the Lord, in front of Allah the Lord of the worlds. And the sun will come close to them. The sun will draw near. And they will be drenched in sweat in accordance with their uh, sins and deeds. Then the balance will be erected, or the scale will be erected, and through it the deeds will be weighed. Your good and your evil deeds will be weighed. Those whose weight will be heavy are going to be successful. Those whose weight will be light are the ones who are doomed to loss, and they will dwell in the hellfire forever. And the records of the deeds will be distributed. People will be given their, their good and their bad deeds. Some will take it by their right hand. And some will, be, will get it in their left hand. And some will take it by putting their hands behind their backs. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned. And we have fastened every man's deeds to his neck. And on the day of resurrection, we should bring out for him a book which he will find wide open, meaning that our deeds will be publicized and made known to him. And then it will be said, read your book, you yourself are sufficient, 
as a, reckon, as a reckoner against you this day. So you will bear witness against yourself on the Yom Qiyamah. Allah will check the account of, of the creatures and will remain with his faithful slave in isolation and will prove his sins as his attribute has been described in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu but the accounting of the disbelievers will not take place with the balancing of the virtues and the vices for they do not have any virtues meaning that if a person died on disbelief shirk and kufr and ilhad that their deeds will be like dust in the wind their deeds will be disseminated will be of no benefit to them it will be blown away all the good that they did in this life as a disbeliever in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have no benefit for them in the hereafter. So if they did good in this life, charity, kindness, uh, you know, being kind and respecting the ties of kinship, being gentle and, 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 and visiting the sick and, and all the virtuous deeds that a person can do in this life, it will not benefit them on the hereafter because they died on disbelief. So only the believers' deeds will be uh, reckoned. But the accounting of the disbelievers will not take place with the balancing of the virtues or the scales and the vices, for they do not have any virtues. Uh, each of their deeds will be enumerated one by one, so their deeds will be taken away from them one by one, and they will be made aware of them and they will confess them. So this is incredibly important for us as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be aware of the Day of Judgment and that will be held accountable uh, held accountable for how we, uh, what we did in this life and how we interacted with one another. Were we uh, the people who were righteous or were we of those people who committed wicked sins and spread, spread uh, wickedness and sinfulness around the world? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, the parable of those who disbelieve in their Lord is that their works are as ashes on which the wind blows furiously on a stormy day. They shall not be able to get aught of what they have earned. So the believer is striving to maintain the good deeds that he or she has achieved in this life by living and dying on Iman, on belief, on the correct Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَا تَمُتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and commands us and urges us and says, do not die except in a state of belief. So correcting our creed and our Aqidah is imperative for us as Muslims that we die as believers, believing in those pillars of Iman and everything that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with and everything that the court is contained in the Qur'an. And just as a extra point I want to mention, as I recently heard one of the people who are well known for their da'wah, calling the people to Islam, calling non-Muslims, they're very successful in this, but however, unfortunately, this particular individual is limited in their knowledge, meaning that they have not went out and sought knowledge from the scholars. And they are dependent upon more than likely translated books. And they tend to speak and make fatawa as if they're drinking water, which is a very dangerous thing. This particular individual is speaking about the Qur'an, the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the speech of Allah, Tabarak wa ta'ala and saying that the Qur'an that we have in our hands is not the kalam of Allah, the speech of Allah, but saying that the Qur'an is only in Allah wal mahfuz Allah wal mahfuz Allah wal mahfuz that the Qur'an is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, this is falsehood, and this is the creed of as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was mentioning some of those early sects like the Jahmiyyah and others who denied that the Qur'an was the speech of Allah and the Ash'ariyah and the Maturidi and those other groups and sects that in one form or another have ilhad with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes and distort the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or give it a new uh, 
put it in a new context. So this is incredibly important for us to know that the Qur'an that we have, that we read, is perfect. It is the speech of Allah, unlike the Ratha the say, unlike the Jahmiya say, unlike the Asha'ir say, and unlike those other groups of deviants and deviancy say and claim, Wulu kari al kafirun, Wulu kari al mushrikun, Wulu kari al ahla ilhad, Wulu kari al ahla zandaka, Wulu kari al ahla bid'ah. That even though the people of disbelief and the people of transgression and the people of innovation deny this in their deviance and their aqidah, this is not the case. The Quran is the kalam of Allah. Kalam Allah, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is perfect and it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it shall return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine sifat and that's why we have to have certain manners with the Quran, reading, having wudu as although there's ikhtilaf with the ulama with this, but that you should be on tahara as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, but the Mufassirin have explained it not to refer to the Quran, but in general, some of the ulama they use this as evidence, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Waqiyah, وَلَا تَمَسُّهُ إِلَّا الْمُطَاهَرُونَ And only the purified uh, should uh, touch it. And so some of them, the Mufassirin, they, they explain that this is regarding the Qur'an, and some of them, or some of the, uh, the scholars, they use this as evidence for saying that a person should be on tahara when reading and reciting and holding the Qur'an, when holding the Qur'an. But regardless of this fact, it shows us that the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is united upon that the Qur'an is the divine speech of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, And the only ones who differ with this are deviants. And the only ones who differ with this are disbelievers of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, either through their zandaka and their ilhad, or their pure ignorance, and they need to be corrected and given da'wah so that they stay away from speaking without knowledge. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those people who speak without knowledge and lets us know that this is a dangerous, dangerous path. And so we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us and guides those people who have deviated with regards to their understanding of the aqeed of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with him nafiyah wa skin tayyibah wa amadu muttaqabbinan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.